appear regularly with similar questions or types of questions. So how will it stop grandstanding? I'm not clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. Um, well, I, I suppose the um, the volume of email, or the volume of questions that come through uh, through email, have we seen? Probably, you, you might have. There's a few that won't that haven't come through because they've been ruled out of order um, in consultation with the Shire President. Um, but if those questions aren't dealt, if those questions come through to the council agenda, come through to the council meeting. Um, and are dealt with or read out um, by the person, um, it's very hard to deal with them um, at the meeting and, and call them out of order. If, you, if, you, if they're sent through beforehand, you've got the opportunity to look at them, assess them and work out whether they're appropriate or not. Um, so that's my thoughts on it. Uh, I have a question. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Athen, you had a question? Oh, right, OK. Um, I know I've gone through all the attachments. I just wanted to know, was the, the guidelines, local government guidelines, in regards to public question time, was that included with the attachments? Can you recall? Uh, Madam recall? President, yep. Yeah, it's item uh, 9.3.2, bracket 2, Local Government Operational Guidelines, August 2002, Managing Public Question Time. OK, yep. Thank you. Okay, so do we have anyone against that would like to speak apart from the right of reply? <laughs> Councillor Mills, would you like to speak against? I would, uh, only because I think here we're taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. <laughs> the reason I'm saying that is um, there may be genuine people who can't make it to Donnybrook from all around our community, Argyle, bailing up, wherever, who can't make it in, who would like ask, to ask questions for the, for, of the council. And they're going to be disenfranchised, the same as the people who are causing frivolous questions. And that's, the, that's, the, that's my concern, that um, it's going to be broad brush, overreaching, that will uh, impact probably a minority of people who can't make it to a council meeting. So on that basis, I really can't accept the wording of it as it is. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Is there anyone for that would like to say for? Uh, Councillor Atherton, you seconded it. Yes. I think you reserved... Oh, you, know, you can. Uh, you you second it, but didn't you reserve your right to speak for second it, or you? No, you can't speak again. You can only speak once. He doesn't have to speak second. Oh, does he? Okay. All right. There you go. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, well, it should come as no surprise to anyone at this table that um, the executive are getting bombarded with what is. Um, scuttlebutt and frivolous uh, time-wasting um, emailing and sadly that takes their time away from the genuine people who do need something solved and resolved. So I'm fully supportive of the executive um, taking some measures to make sure that the money that we're paying them to do their very important jobs is done uh, to the best of their ability and to the best value for the whole community. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Athen. Councillor Smith, have you got some I just question? A, a question. Um, there's nothing to stop... So if someone emails in a question, a legitimate question, there's nothing to stop them to sending one to a councillor to get a question asked in the council meeting, which then will be minuted. What it does mean then is that as councillors, we can make a decision on whether we want to bring it forward because if they're asking the same question over and over and over again, you don't want to answer it again and we don't want to go through it again. So there is a way that these people, if they can't get to a, to a meeting, to certainly let us know about it, and we can read it ourselves. Is that correct? That's correct, Councillor Smith, yes. Can I just ask a question? Yes. Um, 
about saving time, my understanding from uh, the CEO's response was that that they receive an email. If if the CEO receives an email, he will answer it. It's really not going to save him any time in that respect. Is that right? Um, it, it depends if um, depends on what the question is. To be honest, um, quite often if you've got to take a question on notice, there's a lot of research that needs to happen. You've got to prepare letters, do the records, and all the rest of it. You still have to do that, yeah? yeah. Okay, so where we we're, it's against. against. Sorry, I've got a question. Oh, question, Councillor Messy. Sorry, could you just clarify? I think it was what Chris asked. So I always thought the questions that came forward during public question time had to be presented by a member of the public. Well, what I'm now understanding is that they could have sent it to us and we read it on their behalf. Is that, am I understanding correctly now? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Madam President. But my interpretation of Councillor Smith's question was, if a, if a councillor has a, sorry, if a member of the community has a question, they can pass it on to a councillor. A councillor can ask that at a gender briefing session. A councillor can ask that during, um, during the debate uh, on an item, not necessarily at public question time. Mm. And if I miss... Misunderstood what Sorry, you meant. Not, ex not exactly what I was saying, because that would mean that the question has to be about the agenda item. It can be about any item, any matter. So there is a, there is an opportunity at public question time. Order to, yeah. I've got a question from the public to read out. There's, oh, no one's ever done it. That's all. But there is, we can do it. You can answer. Yeah. Thanks, Madam President. Um, there's nothing in, this, in the meeting procedures that says that can't happen. I haven't seen it happen before, but there's no reason it couldn't. Yeah. Just another question. Don't we uh, promote um, correspondence to the council to come to the president and the CEO? That's my understanding of the current practice, instead of going to individual councillors. Um, the, thank you, Councillor Mills. Um, outgoing correspondence on behalf of the Shire will generally be from the, from the Shire President and, and the CEO, uh, but incoming correspondence, as you have probably experienced in the last couple of weeks, uh, will come to you all directly from members of the community. Um, I'm seeing some nodding there. I'm sure you've received lots of phone calls and lots of emails and might even be a letter. There's a few letters in the, in the mix as well. But that doesn't all just solely come to myself and the Shire President. Yeah. It comes to all of you as well. Yeah. Okay, so um, just my question is in regards to the Department of Local Government guidelines. There was one thing that wasn't actually put into the policy which I think I might have mentioned to you before, yeah. was in regards to when someone comes here, there's been past, in the past, people have said, oh, you haven't recorded my question. And in the guidelines, one of the options you could do was that the people could actually have the question in writing uh, presented. Um, is that something that is worth considering or is it? Yeah. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the Local Government Act and the admin regulations um, stipulate that a summary of the question and a summary of the response is to be provided. Um, we've got the audio recording now, which goes up onto the onto the website, uh, yeah, onto the website, um, so people can listen to it if they want to get a, a full, detailed sort of understanding of the the question and the response. Thank you. I've lost my train of thought. Okay, um, speaker, against. speaker against this motion. No? Councillor Glover? You're closing the debate, then it goes to the vote. No other questions? Okay, all right. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so with regard to this policy, 
Um, I, I, I go back to the um, 2021 um, election and how the community spoke clearly through their votes that they wanted shy transparency and more communication with regard to council. Um, in, in my in opinion, this policy is aimed at somewhat limiting transparency and open communication between council and community members. The policy in its current form lacks insight into the impact people who are unable to attend meetings and have their question recorded on the um, ordinary council meeting minutes. It also seems to ignore um, events of the last couple of years where COVID has highlighted the often fraught nature of face-to-face -face meetings. Um, people are just unable to attend meetings for a variety of valid reasons. Now, I understand you could ask a neighbour or a friend or anything like that too, but um, I know myself, I would find that hard to do. Um, so, you know, people have work commitments, they have distance to travel, um, they live outside of the Donnerbrook area, there might be mental health concerns, they might have high anxiety or other mental health problems as well, or concerns as well. And just any other significant barriers like um, disability, childcare. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people cannot attend meetings, but I don't believe that that should limit them from having their answers or their questions actually minuted in the um, minutes. Um, our, all of our community um, members are they're all equally important and restricting the ability for some to have their questions recorded clearly devalues some of these community members. I'm not for it. Um, I find that there was, a ha there was haste around this item as well. I mean, it was only two weeks ago that this was actually thought about and, and had been actually decided to do. And I just find it, it lacks empathy and it um, has no really foreseeable value to our community. I'm surprised and disappointed that it's been tabled. And as I said before, from item 9.3.1 from the September meeting as well, where we developed a framework or it was voted on that there was a framework, this has not been followed. And I understand what you've said about that too. But if we've created a, a policy to write policy, we really need to be um, following that policy. I believe community members should be consulted on this and we should have um, further, I don't mind there being a policy around it, but I think that it needs to be further teased out so that we don't exclude members of the community. Community members are required to to participate in community consultation to inform policy, like I said. Um, so I'm asking other councillors here tonight to think carefully on their vote with regard to enabling a policy which seeks to limit transparency, communication and inclusiveness between Shire and community members. And aside from this, there's an obvious flaw of not following that policy framework policy um, and due process has not been followed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glover. I'm going to put it to the vote. All those in favour of this policy? Um, I'm going to go. Yep. And against? Six against. Three, four. It's lost. Thank you. You need a reason. Um, oh, why well, it was lost? Yeah. Okay, so we need a reason. Yeah, I've got a report. Um, sorry, Madam President. Under the admin regs for the, for the purpose of the minutes, I need to record a reason for the, um, uh, for the motion being lost. The reason is that it hasn't followed due process and we haven't followed the policy for creating policy, as well as um, it just lacks um, inclusivity in the community for open communication, which is what the community want.
it's probably too late now, but we could have made an amendment, I suppose, <laughs> with that particular item. Thank you. We're moving along. We're on 12.1, where we need to say goodbye. Can I just ask a question? We haven't talked anything about the financials. It was part of the budget. Yeah, but we haven't talked about the financials. It was passed on block. Uh, this is the sad time where we've got to say goodbye to our public members because we actually are closing, <laughs> closing our meeting because we have confidential items. Thank you for attending tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Do I have a mover that we close this meeting? Massey uh, seconded Councillor Jones. All those in favour? Anyone against? <laughs> That's carried. <laughs>